Why don't you up here? Yeah. <laughs> to turn the service over to our very, very dear friend, Lynn Gospel Mink. Duck. Amen. And Gospel Duck. Amen. And all the other critters. Amen. We are many. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> and they all live on the inside of me. Amen. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to change my mind. Oh, I, <laughs> just don't say, come out in the name of Jesus. There won't be room. Because <laughs> they'll all come out of them, too. All the all porky pig and all the things they did growing up, you know. But yeah, but yeah, but yeah, praise the Lord. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, if you're into pork, that's okay. Amen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. So it's yours, my friend. Let's hear it for Pastor Ken. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we love him and Donna so much. Glory to God. Now, I want you to say this. I, I am, on am on vacation for this service today. This service I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to obey the Lord. And I refuse not to have fun. So let's all stand up. Amen. Now, I have a friend who, matter of fact, I looked on Wikipedia this morning before we came over, and he is the most recorded guitarist on earth to this date. I'm talking more than, than Eric Clapton, more than Segovia, more than any of these guitar players. And uh, his name is Mike Deasy. Well, a funny thing happened on the way to hell. Mike got saved. And uh, back in the day, he was working with Cher and with Barbara Streisand, and he played with the Beach Boys for years. And uh, they're a backup singer and the guy that helped write a lot of those, those songs and uh, surfing songs. So I thought we'd start out with one of Mike's tunes that I recorded years ago called Deuteronomy 28. But now it requires your fun. Look at all the Indianapolis 500 right here, you know? I mean, the, the aisles are open. We have new carpet. It needs to be compressed, you know, by dancing on every square. All right, there he is. I didn't believe in reincarnation until Walter, Walter Brennan just walked in just then. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Now, this requires your help. Remember, the Beach Boys sounds is kind of like hep, 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 and whoo, you know, kind of the surfing sound. So your part from the aisle over, I hate church splits, but I'm going to have to split the church for this. From here over, your part is whoo, all right? Don't forget the lyrics. They're really tough. And equally tough over here is, thank you, Lord. Turn the lights back on. Amen. The, your part over here is, now three of them, not four, Hep, hep, hep. Are you ready? One, two, three. Hep, hep, hep. Now your part again is. <laughs> if I was a dog, that would have hurt my ears. I don't know. And your part is. <laughs> All right, Mr. Soundman, hit the band. Glory to God. I mean, don't literally hit him, but you know. All right. All right. We need a lot more volume on the tracks. Amen. Hallelujah. A lot more volume on the track. Yeah. Now move your body around a little bit. Here we go. A little more. Deuterana, Deuterana. Me. Ready over here. Deuterana, Deuterana. Deuterana, Deuterana. Me. Ready over here. Deuterana, Deuterana. Hep, hep, hep. All the blessings of Abraham are mine. So fine. All the blessings of Abraham are mine, so fine. Blessed in the city and the country too. I'm blessed in everything I put my hand to, yeah. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. All the blessings of Abraham are mine, so fine. All the blessings of Abraham are mine, so fine. Come on, here we go over here now. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, your part. Deuteronomy, 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 Deuteronomy. You gonna let them get by with that? Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. 
Yeah. All the blessings of Abraham are mine. So fine. All the blessings of Abraham are mine. So fine. Curses everyone who hangs on a tree. Oh, yeah. And Jesus bore that curse for me. Yes, he did. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. All the blessings of Abraham are mine. So fine. All the blessings of Abraham are mine. So fine. Come on, let's put our hands together. Hallelujah. Crank it up, Todd. Amen. Faith cometh by hearing. Hallelujah. It's all for you. It's there to be seen. Oh, yeah. Turn to Galatians 3.13. Yeah. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. All the blessings of Abraham are mine. So fine. All the blessings of Abraham are mine. So fine. Now we're going to switch parts. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. You do their part. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Come on. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. Yeah. All the blessings of Abraham are mine. So fine. All the blessings of Abraham, they're mine. So fine. Everybody do both parts. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. Are you ready? Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. Yeah. All the blessings of Abraham are mine. So fine. All the blessings of Abraham are mine. So fine. Yeah. Amen. Come on, somebody shout and say hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to do up-tempo stuff, so you might as well just stay standing. Amen. I tell you what, I saw Penny. Penny, Penny, I saw you. I don't know if I saw it in the spirit or if I saw it in the natural. You were just getting ready to break forth. I saw a spirit of chubby checker come on you. And, and I saw you started to do the the Holy Ghost twist just a little bit like that. Am I wrong or am I speaking the truth? I am speaking the truth. It was a temptation that many of you had, right? Amen. Well, give in to it. Listen, I, I heard Mike Murdoch and people that take big offerings on TV say something like this. Uh, <laughs> amen. I'll just use it. Hey, man, it's not copyrighted. To have something, and it's really true, to have something you've never had before, you got to do something you've never done before. To have a garden, you got to plant seeds. You know, to step out of that zone of comfortable predictability into the arena of faith, it takes movement forward. It takes movement from where you last drew the circle. Self-possession is a form of cannibalism. Ooh. Amen. Because when you feed on yourself you get sick. But when you feed on faith, you feed on the word, you get well. And you step out of that zone of comfortable predictability into the arena of faith and things start happening. And the Lord's up there going, I've been waiting on you for years to just take this little step instead of hiding in the pew, hiding behind the seat, white knuckled on the chair in front of you, you know, and just get out and relax. You're at daddy's house. You can, hey, when you go to your parents, did you ever go and check the refrigerator without asking? Yes. Now you don't have to ask at your mom and dad's about, can I raid the ice box? A couple of you remember ice boxes, amen. <laughs> amen. And uh, no, we don't have to do that here. We can just say, it's all for us. It's there to be seen. Amen. Turn to Galatians 3.13. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Isn't this fun? I said, both of you, isn't this fun? <laughs> A couple of you look like, are there any lights over top of this thing? Oh, well, maybe. I don't know. If not, that's okay. Uh, faith cometh by hearing, but seeing really helps. 
Isn't he wonderful? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, I know it's a gift. Oh, thank you, Lord, or Todd, whoever it was. <laughs> Amen. Todd thinks that's one and the same. But okay. <laughs> Amen. How many of you know the Lord is El Shaddai? We've learned that from Dad Hagen, the God who's more than enough, the breasty one. And if you ever watch Dr. Pole on TV, or if you've ever been raised on a farm, that mama sow has all kinds of little uh, restaurants open right there for babies, amen? That's the idea. God never runs out of anything. He never runs out of supply. He's always lying there ready for you to quote, hook up as we say on the farm and, uh, and get your needs met and over and above so you can help other people meet theirs. Amen. So that's what this next song is all about. Todd man, hit the orchestra. Amen. <laughs> He can supply all my needs. He is my El Shaddai. He always looks out for me. He's Jehovah Jireh. And he is my God. Come on, say his name again. His name, Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. We gotta sing it again. My God is more than enough. My God is more than enough. He does supply all my needs. He is my El Shaddai. He always looks out for me. He's Jehovah Jireh. And He is my God. Come on, say His name again. J, J, Jehovah Jireh. Yeah. He is my God. Mm. All of the earth is His, the fullness. All of the earth is His. And the fullness thereof, everything that you need, you can be sure of. His name's Jehovah Jireh, and He is my God. Oh yeah, come on, say that JJ name. Jehovah Jireh. Yeah, and what is He to you? He is my God. All right, hallelujah. Let's do it again. All of the earth is His. And the fullness thereof, everything that I need, I can be sure of. His name's Jehovah Jireh, written all over everything. He is my God. Oh, make it personal. Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. Now here's where you have to kind of get the attitude. So why should I worry about the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs, when by my faith I know my God is more than enough. He does supply all my needs. He is my El Shaddai. He always looks out for me. Jehovah Jireh, clap your hands, saith the Lord. He is my God. Hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh, He is my God. All of the earth is His. All of the earth is His. And the fullness thereof. Everything that I need, I, I can be sure of. Cause He's Jehovah Jireh. And He is my God. Hallelujah. So why should I? Why should I work it? Y'all behave yourself down there. I'm singing. Amen. Now let's try it. Here we go. So why should I worry about the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs, when by my faith I know my God is more than enough. Hallelujah. Come on, let's put the hands together. I dare you to move your body. I dare you, move it somehow. Just by faith, move it somehow. That's it. Take the shackles off my feet so I can dance. I just want to praise Him. 
I just want to praise him. You broke the chains, now I can lift my hands. And I'm going to praise him. And I'm going to praise him. Sing that again. Take the shackles off my feet so I can dance. I just want to praise him. I just want to praise him. A dance is coming. So I can lift my hand. Just giving you a warning. I'm going to praise him. Are you ready to dance? I'm going to praise him. Here's a little Hebrew dance. And if you lived in Israel in the 1960s, it looks like this. I got myself tickled on that. God has broken every chain with that Walter Brennan. Take the shackles off my feet so I can dance. I just want to praise him. I just want to praise him. You broke the chains, now I can lift my hands. And I'm going to praise him. And I'm going to praise him. Take the shackles off my feet so I can dance. I just want to praise him. I just want to praise him. You broke the chains, now I can lift my hands. Yeah, I'm just going to praise him. And I'm going to praise him. Take the shackles off my feet so I can dance. I just want to praise him. I just want to praise him. Yeah. You broke the chains, now I can lift my hands. See how easy that is? Praise him. And I'm going to praise him. You broke the chains. You broke the chains, now I can lift my hands. And I'm going to praise him. Here we go. I'm going to praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Woo, glory to God. Isn't that fun? See, you can, you can just break out. There, you just break out any time. You know, I mean, careful when you're driving. That kind of is right up there with texting while you're driving. You've got to be careful. But you can be in the spirit and, and, and praise the Lord. Put that CD on, you know, of that song and just go for it. Amen. And uh, people come, you know, you come into work in the morning, you've been praising the Lord in the traffic and praising the Lord in the shower, not in that order. And you've been, <laughs> you've been having a good time and, and people get to work. You get to work and they look at that glow on your face and they say, what are you on? And like we said back in the 60s, I'm on the most high God. Amen. Hallelujah. I am, a he, I am a, on the most high. El Shaddai. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Well, here is a song that I like because it only has one chord, D, D flat. And uh, it, it's so simple, but it requires, again, movement. A couple of you still look like you're on jury duty. I'm not here to bring condemnation. I'm just here to bring freedom. Freedom. You can do it. You can do it. It's like the guy on the comedy program, you know, the comedy movie. You can do it. Amen. Hallelujah. So just move around a little bit. And I mean, this one, you got to, you, can you feel that spring? Go ahead and feel the back here. There's a spring. And the, why are you looking at me that way? There's a spring in kind of the back, and it requires, this song requires just a little bit of that. And who knows? I got back problems, Brother Lynn. Well, do the spring, and you'll get healed. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead, sir. I think you'll recognize this. Praise God. Huh. Oh, yeah. This side's doing better than over here. Hallelujah. You going to let them get by with that? That's it, girl. Let the rain fall. Go, friend. Let the wind blow. <laughs> let the fire burn. Let the river flow. Let the rain fall. 
Let the wind blow Let the fire burn Let the river flow Now listen to this Here we stand on the banks of the river of God Living waters flowing down from above I hear the prophet saying, how much do you want? It's up to you. Ankle deep or tell me, do you want to jump? Hey! We're going to jump, jump. There's that spring. Jump in the river, going to jump, jump. Go ahead. Jump in the river, going to jump, jump. You're doing good. Jump in the river, going to jump, jump. Jump in the river. Hallelujah. See, you got to do some work now because we're going to have a big meal up there in a few minutes. You got to work it off ahead of time. Amen. Let the rain fall. Let the wind blow. Let the fire burn. Let the river flow. All right, here we stand. Here we stand on the banks of the river of God. Living waters flowing down from above. I hear Dr. Stewart saying, how much do you want? Write your own ticket. It's up to you. People tell me, do you wanna jump? Hey, we're gonna jump, jump, jump in the river, 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 gonna jump, jump. Jump in the river, gonna jump, jump. Jump in the river, gonna jump, jump. Jump in the river, let the rain fall. Let the wind blow. Let the fire burn. Let the river flow. Come on, here we go. We're gonna jump, jump. Jump in the river, 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 gonna jump. Jump. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo! Our grandparents did the bunny hop back in the day, remember? That's what all of you began to look like, amen, except with the Holy Ghost, amen. See, you got to get a little bit radical around the edges. You have to let what's on the inside. I mean, just do we just come here as, you know, oh boy, we're going to go to the smorgasbord, the Stuart buffet, <laughs> the God buffet. And we're just going to come and get in our high chair and just, and then we go out unchanged. I mean, we're blessed, but you know, the change doesn't come until you offer to others what you got here. And it has to come through you to them in order for you to get the harvest on it. So you'll change. Amen. It's called the change circle. Somebody come up to you on the street. Got any change, brother? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got a lot of change. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, isn't this fun? Well, let's see. I Nine of you look like you're on jury duty. Now it's down to four. That's good. That's good. Hallelujah. Just, just pretend like, 
you know, the day of Pentecost. And uh, the people on the street said, man, you guys are sloshed out of your mind. Yeah. You're, and and, and they, they told the people back on the street when they heard the party uh, and saw the lights and heard the tongues in their own languages, these aren't drunk, as you suppose. They're uh, enjoying something on a much higher plane <laughs> and with no hangover, amen? Thank you, Lord. Think for a moment of what the Lord's done in your life. Trace salvation into your life for just a minute. Trace the, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That good old Greek word, baptizo, means a... Amen. Just, it's a sponge. It's a dry sponge plunged into hot oil. And once it's under the water, you go <laughs> about 55 times. And then you lift it up and it can't hold one more drop. That's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Oh, glory to God. We're <laughs> drippy, drippy, drippy. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the way he wants you. Amen. Not irresponsible, but focused, but with the power. Focused with the power. Hallelujah. So I'm going to sing this ballad, and you just stand there. And, and uh, whatever the Lord tells you to do, uh, Scott Martin and others, you just respond to the Lord during this ballad. Are you ready? Now, get in a real worshipful state of mind. Okay, go ahead. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. Oh, I'm going to praise His name. I'm going to praise Him. He saved me just the same. Oh, yeah. Come on, me praise Him. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He's been so good. Look what the Lord has done. Oh, yeah. He healed my body. He touched my, he mind. Touched my mind. He saved he me just in time. Oh, I'm going to praise his name. I'm going to praise him. He saved he's just the same. Oh, yeah. Come on, me praise him. Look what the Lord has done. I've got it. I've got it. How about you? Amen. I've got it. I've got it. Now there's just something about that Holy Ghost. I got it. Hallelujah. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. Oh, yes, I've got it. There's just something about that Holy Ghost. I can't explain it, but I've got it in my hands. Got it in my feet. Got it in my walk. Got it in my talk. Got it all over me. I love this one. God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead, no. He's still alive. I said God's not dead. He's still alive. I can feel him in my head. And I feel him in my feet. I feel him in my walk. Feel him in my talk. Feel him all over me. God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead now. He's still alive. I said, My God's not dead. He's still alive. I can feel him in my hand. And I feel him in my feet. Feel him in my walk. Feel him in my talk. Feel him all over me. Say these three words. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. Now there's just something about that Holy Ghost. I can't explain it, but I got it in my hands. Got it in my feet. Got it in my walk. Got it in my talk. Got it in my hands. Got it in my feet. Got it in my walk. Got it in my talk. I've got it all over me. Come on now. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He touched my mind. He saved me 
just in time. I'm gonna praise his name. I'm gonna praise him. Each day he's just the same. Oh yeah. Look what the Lord Come on and tell me about it. Look what the Lord has done. He's been so good. Oh yeah. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. And I'm going to praise his name. I'm going to praise him. Every day he's the same. Oh yeah. Hallelujah. They're coming around the home strip. Look what the Lord has done. Come help me praise Him. Look what the Lord has done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, give Him praise today. Look what He's done for you. Hallelujah. Look what he's done for you. Look what he's done for your family, your finances, your body, your marriage, your mind, your self-love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ah, oh, boy. Man. That's called a Holy Ghost fit. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead and be seated. Praise the Lord. Thank you for remaining up for a while. It's good for you. Thank you, Lord. I just got a word for somebody. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, it can be, you know. And uh, get over your ancestry. Quit getting fixated on Ancestry.com. I place great emphasis on genealogy when it has something to do with me. It's very important. Because there were real people with real needs that found real answers with a real God. That's the importance of genealogy. That's the only importance of it. You may have come in a certain color package. That's my doing. Don't ever bother with thinking about that. Don't even touch that with your thought life. The problem is, saith the Lord, that when you come and try to find out who you are by looking at those people that came behind you, you are barking up the wrong tree. Because who you are can only be discovered through me and my word. There is a difference between identity and identification. I identify with this color, this culture, this part of the geography, this custom. That All that's fine, but don't look for who you are amongst those things about you and those that went before you. Ancestry. You are my family. I am your family. We are the family of God, and we come in a million different packages. We are the family of God. So, pointing this out, says the lover of your soul, get on with finding out who you are from my word and not just from natural lineage. And to top it all off, if you knew how much I loved you just the way you are, just the way I made you, you would literally find a way to dance on the ceiling. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, that was strong. Man, God is so creatively, infinitely wonderful. He, he can come up with new ways to say the same, apparent same things, but none of them are ever the same. Oh, here comes another one. Wow. Man. You are a tuning fork. Bing. You, when touched by the world, or whenever you, the tuning fork, touches the world, whether it's them touching you or you coming in contact with them, you send off frequencies. And frequencies are 
an inventory of what lies within, a spiritual address, as it were, a manifest, a roster, a table of contents, an inventory. So when you are touched by the world, make the things that are important to me important to you, and you will emit downloaded frequencies from me. For I made you to broadcast those frequencies whenever touched or whenever you touch others at my direction. You are a transmitting station, as it were. And you are a one-of-a-kind, unique tuning fork with a one-of-a-kind, unique frequency, just like your DNA is one-of-a-kind. That DNA is your personal, private, unique, one-of-a-kind musical score. And when you are played in front of other people, what's inside of you, which hopefully is what's inside of me. As I said, my father and I are one. If you've seen the, me, you've seen the father. I want the world to be able to see, if, say, if you've seen her or if you've seen him, you've seen Jesus, you've seen the father, you've seen the Holy Spirit, you've seen the heart of God. You know, it's like this song said in this ballad form, amen. <laughs> I can't explain it, but I've got it. Hallelujah. Another thing that happens, and now this is me talking. Another thing that happens in when you tune an instrument, you hit that tuning fork that's pre-tuned to a certain note, a certain frequency, and you can hear it with the ear, but when you really hear it is when you touch the base of it to your instrument, like a piano or a guitar, particularly acoustic uh, instruments. And you can tell because it is a direct transference of the frequencies, not just through the air, but directly into the material that the thing you're touching is made of. Are you getting this? All these parallelisms? Amen. Praise the Lord. As we let the Lord t t give us a little flick and his frequencies come through us, the tuning fork. And when we touch that tuning fork to the instruments of the world, here it is. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, that's sweet. <sighs> they have a bass line, a bedrock line to tune their personal instruments from. Amen. Go ahead. Todd, go ahead. This is a fade up, so it'll come slowly. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Would you lift your hands for a moment? Healing rain is falling down. It's coming nearer to this old town. Rich and poor, the weak and strong, it's bringing mercy and it won't be long. Healing rain is coming down. It's coming closer to the lost and found. Tears of joy and tears of shame are washed forever in Jesus' name. Healing rain, it comes with fire, so let it fall. And take us higher Healing rain I'm not afraid To be washed In heaven's rain So lift your heads Let us return 
to the mercy seat where time began in your eyes i see the pain come so this dry heart in his healing rain and only you the son of man can take a leper and make him stand so lift your hands they can be held by someone greater he's the great i am and the healing rain it comes with fire so let it fall and take us higher that healing rain don't be afraid let it flow down over thee and you'll be washed in jesus name lift your hands and say out loud thank you lord i receive the washing of your word I thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, you never leave me, you never forsake me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Let's stand together now. Let's stand. Everybody stand. Healing rain is falling down. Healing rain is falling down. I'm not afraid. Healing rain is falling down. The healing rain is falling down. I'm not afraid. No, I'm not afraid. The healing rain is falling down. Healing rain is falling down. Falling down, healing rain is falling down. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Oh, I'm not afraid. Wash me, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, just sing it in that note. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Oh. Hallelujah. Just go ahead. Thank Give him praise. Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Father. Well, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'll let you be seated. Praise the Lord. We have a number of people visiting with us today for the first time. We are thrilled that you are here. We invite you to come back and be with us again. I'd like for the ushers to hand you something, if they would, please. We want to give you a CD of one of our previous messages. Also, they have a little card that you can fill out. Lift up your hand if you're a visiting person today, if you would, please. We'll be glad to get one of these to you. If you'd like to fill out that card, that will give us the opportunity to put you in our email database so that we can notify you in advance of events that are coming up. And I'll segue from that statement to this one. Put on your calendar October 21. 22, 23, 24. That is our Holy Ghost Conference. We call it Excelling in the Gifts. The kind of music that you just heard with Lynn Mink, that's the music we have in that conference. Lynn does the music. There are three couples are involved, Lynn and Kathy Mink, Bill and Linda McRae, Don and I. We will start on Sunday afternoon 
We won't have anything Monday morning, but Monday night, Tuesday morning, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, Wednesday night. These are powerful meetings, awesome meetings. You don't want to miss that. Be right here. What a great time those meetings are in the Lord. Amen. So remember that. All right? We're going to receive the church offering at this time, our regular tithes and offerings. If you need an envelope for your giving, please lift your hand. The ushers will see that you get one. If you're going to be making out a check, make that payable to Sunday sessions. We will be receiving two offerings today. After Kathy finishes speaking, she will turn the platform back to me, and I will be receiving an offering for Lynn Mink Ministries. If you only brought one check and you want to uh, split that up, you can mark that on your envelope. We will follow your wishes in that regard. Also, you can give by credit card. I'll say more about how you can do that right here today in their offering at the end of the service. But uh, we just want to give you every opportunity we can to give. Giving is a blessing. What I said is giving is a blessing. It is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Why did he say that? Because we enjoy receiving so much. You didn't follow that all the way through. He knew we enjoy receiving so much. So he said it's more blessed to give than it is to receive so we'd understand how blessed it is to give. This is not hard. I know that people don't believe it. They're the ones that don't give. Come on. Givers know what I just said is true. It is true. There's nothing that can match the fun of giving. It's a joy. It is a joy to give. Amen? Now, while you're getting things ready there, I'm going to keep talking. It's just things, you know, we have visitors, and, and some of you, this is the first time you've ever been in this building. Well, in January this year, we didn't know we were going to be in this building. We were talking about it, but this place was a mess. He's saying, look what the Lord has done. Wow. You ought to see the pictures of this place when we got our hands on it the middle of January. Look what the Lord has done. Amen. Hallelujah. And all, everything you see is paid for. Hallelujah. Look what the Lord has done. Amen. For those of you who do not know, this is not the final platform. Thank God. It's like Wednesday at noon in Tulsa. This is a test. Some of you got that. Some of you didn't. By the way, you didn't realize you were Walter Brennan's younger brother, did you? It just takes a long time to write thousands, so that's why I'm still talking, all right? <laughs> but we will be building a full stage up here and doing some more decorating. It just takes time to do these things. So we're dealing with this right now. Next Sunday, it will be one foot higher. I'm going to lay hands on it this week. I've got a few tools I'm going to use, too, you understand. But we're going to raise it up. We're going to get the right height and get it just so-so, and then we'll build the stage. Amen? Are you all ready? Get your offering in your hand. Father, thank you for an opportunity to give. We're always looking for these opportunities, a chance to give. It may be in a service it may be in a Walmart. It may be in a restaurant. It may be somewhere else. But we live to give because we love to give. We thank you for the privilege, the honor today. We glorify and magnify you in all the return. In Jesus' name, amen.
just scanning the audience to see how many of you grew up in the Assemblies of God Church. You probably knew that song. How many of you knew what she was playing? I'm anchored in Jesus. That's right. It's a great song. Great song. Okay, I got one more announcement, then I'm going to introduce Kathy. August 1st, that's on a Wednesday night, starting August 1st, on Wednesday night at 7.30, we're going to start our Gifts of the Spirit training sessions. They'll be on Wednesday night, starting August the 1st at 7.30. All right? This is open to anybody that wants to come. And we'll be explaining more later, but I've been working toward this, trying to get everything ready. So we'll start that on Wednesday night, August the 1st. And I'll tell you more about it later. It's going to be great. Now then, are you ready for the Word? I thought so. It's a real blessing today to receive from the excellent teaching ministry of Kathy Mink. She is a blessing as a person. Amen. The more opportunity you have to get to know her, the more you love her. She's a precious, wonderful lady of the Lord. And she's got a message today from the Lord for us. Come, Kathy, at this time. Make her welcome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Tim. Thank you so much. We're so glad to be here today with so many of our friends. We appreciate you coming. We love this church. This is our home church Amen. when we're home. And we are so glad to be with Dr. Ken and Donna Stewart. You know, there's so many things about Dr. Stewart. I don't know if some of you even know. You know, he has his master's degree. He has his doctorate. He, is, he has worked in so many areas for the Lord. Uh, I don't know if anybody can compare to that, really, what you all have done. They pastored Family Worship Center. And you know that we found the cassette tape cleaning out our office this week? of our service at Family Worship Center with you. In the 80s. You were 20. I was 20, that's right. <laughs> but we've uh, known them for a long time, but they've pastored that church. Ken has pastored Grace Fellowship here in town. He was the first dean of Rama Bible Training Center. Um, Brother Hagen, Kenneth Hagen. I mean, you think about that. Kenneth Hagen could have asked anybody and gotten them to come when he started a school, but he asked Dr. Stewart. I think that's a great honor. Amen. And he's worked with Rodney Howard Brown's ministry. He's helped so many ministries so unselfishly. And I found out the other day, you know, I find out things about him all the time, too. I found out that, um, you don't mind if I tell on you, do you? That <laughs> he was also sought after to be a dean at Oral Roberts University and turned it down because the Lord had other plans for him. So we have a very special pastor. Amen. And, of course, Donna is the real strength behind him. <laughs> and we all know that we all know that I want you to turn to the book of 1st John we're going to look at some scriptures today uh, Pastor Stewart has been teaching he has started a series on prayer and so I thought I'd just flow right with that and the Lord really gave me some things about prayer. And so I'm going to be talking about the prayer of faith today, Mark 11, 23 and 24, but not always in the normal way that we talk about it. The Lord's given me some additional things that I think are 
tremendous revelations that we need to look at today that will enable us to get our prayers answered and get them answered quickly. How many people are tired of waiting and waiting and waiting for a prayer to be answered? It doesn't really make a lot of sense because the Lord says that from the foundation of the world, even the crucifixion, the resurrection, and all that he's done, the healing he's provided, the prosperity he's provided, the, the forgiveness of sins he's provided, it was finished. So it's past tense. It's already been done. So when we pray and we ask for things and we receive by faith, we're receiving things that have already been established from the foundation of the world. So there shouldn't really be a big wait. I have a definition of prayer that I really like, that I want to give you. Once you're born again, it's your legal right in asking God to intervene supernaturally on your behalf. That's what prayer is. Now I'm going to read it again. Prayer is your legal right as a Christian in asking God to intervene supernaturally on your behalf. What a God we have. So let's look at 1 John 5, verses 14 and 15. And it says this. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. That's quite a statement. Now let's look at the 14th verse again. And this is the confidence. What is confidence? It's faith. I studied uh, confidence for one of our TV shows. I wanted to teach on it. And I found out in about 20 minutes that all confidence is is faith. Amen. It's not separate from faith. You can't be confident unless you build your faith. That gives you confidence. And so that's what John is talking about here. This is the confidence or this is the faith that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Now, we, this is so important because the next verse says we, we know that if he hears us, we have whatever we ask. When it says, if we ask anything according to his will, I think we tend to put a religious idea on that that isn't really there. I think we're thinking, well, if it's something noble, if it's for somebody else to be saved, for somebody to be healed, for somebody to be helped financially or whatever, that, then we know that's the will of God. But that's not really what it means. Because the other scriptures in the Old and New Testament show the will of God to be so wild and so extravagant. Plus, he tells us we can have the desires of our heart that it can't be restricted to just things that some people think are godlike. So get that out of your mind. I believe the Lord showed me that it actually means that his will there is talking about the basic blueprint that he gives us in the scripture of the correct way to pray. That if we ask anything according to his will in the way he lays out that we're to pray that brings results, he hears it, he answers it, and he gives it to us. Now, so 
To me, this refers to a prayer blueprint, a spiritual principle to get results. Now, let's look over at Mark 11, Mark 11, 23, which is one of our big faith scriptures, one of my favorites. Now, I'm going to pause for just a minute because I did my usual. I forgot to tell about the product, and I want to give some away. So there are some people here that have prayed that they would be able to get some product that they wanted. So this flows right in with the prayer. Amen. So I'm going to pause for a minute and tell you a little bit about this and give some away because it is more fun to give than to receive. So... Um, we set up a big full table today for Sunday sessions like we do at the Copeland meetings. And we uh, gave some real bargains because we want you to be able to get what you want and also to be able to get things to give to other people to minister to them. And so first thing I have here, we call it the heaven package. And if you watch our television program, this has been the offer for a number of weeks, the Heaven Package. And when they give the offer, they say for $45 to the network, TCT, for that offering and become a partner, you get this. But we have it back there for $20 today. It's the Angel Packet, also known as the Heaven Packet. Um, <laughs> 10 songs that the Lord gave Lynn of songs that they sing in heaven. Kenneth Copeland and Lynn were asking the Lord one day in the speaker's room before a convention, what do you think the Lord sings? What do they sing in heaven? Because Zachariah says the Lord rejoices over us with singing. So they're singing stuff. Well, Kenneth and Lynn were the only ones that had asked because they were the psalmists. The other ones didn't sing that were in the speaker's room. And they had asked the Lord, what do you sing? What's being sung in heaven? And so Len went home and kept praying about it, and the Lord gave him 10 songs in two days. And they really are something, and all different kinds of music. There's one that the children that died young or the aborted babies sing back to earth called Throwaway Children. But it's uplifting. It's healing. And it's, it's a wonderful CD. So that CD, then my teaching on uh, Send Your Angels, which I'm going to hit a little bit today. And then this one is a description of the angel that came into the Fort Worth Convention Center several years back during the Kenneth Copeland Southwest Convention. And Len saw it, and this is the description of it, because so many people wanted to know what it looked like. So I want to give that to somebody and I knew I was going to say, Walt, before I even <laughs> saw your hand. <laughs> saw your hand. Now, Josh, come up here so that you can help me give these out. This is um, my granddaughter is here today, Sydney, and this is her fin friend, Josh Wells, and they're helping us today. He's a fine young man. Um, now, this one is called Accelerate Your Faith, and it's Len and I teaching on Oasis. And it really gives some keys to building and accelerating your faith. I want you to give that, Josh. Len, raise your hand so he sees you. Give that to the man with his hand raised. Thank you. And then this is one of my favorites. It's uh, Not To Me You Don't, speaking to the devil or anybody representing him. Josh. Keep your hand up, young man. The young man back there on the back row with his hand up. Now, there is a smart young man. He's going to get his foot on the devil's neck early. This one is uh, five episodes of our television program on DVD. It's called From Trouble to Triumph, Psalm 46. And Len gives so many of the Hebrew meanings that it just, it's, it just lifts you beyond. Did you want it on the back row? Okay, we'll put the hand up so jo Josh can see you. Put it up higher. Thank you, Josh. 
And then this one, see, I always say that from all the meetings we've sat in, where Len is singing, or it's a Copeland meeting where Len's singing and I'm not teaching in that meeting, then I become an audience person. So as an audience person, I know what we audience people want. <laughs> we want the songs that we heard sung that day or that meeting that ministered to us. And it, it doesn't always happen, but it's happening here today because for the first time in 40 years, I got to pick the song as Lynn sang. <laughs> yeah, it's a miracle. Well, we're in the end time. <laughs> And so here are one, two, three, four, five CDs, and every song he sang today are on one of these CDs. And, uh, but we've lowered the price so much that, I, I mean, I'm going to give it to somebody, but it's, it's only $30 for all five. Okay, Martha, put your hand up. Josh, give it to Martha there. Thank you. And then these two um, are healing praise and peaceful praise. Healing praise is Kenneth and Gloria Copeland reading healing scriptures and Len singing healing songs in between. Thousands upon thousands have been healed from every kind of disease listening, listening to this CD and it's a big seller at KCM. And then this is the same format with peace. Peaceful praise. And it's Kenneth and Gloria reading scripture about peace and Len singing peaceful songs, so peaceful in between, it'll put you to sleep. <laughs> it will. Fran, you want it? Okay, Fran in the front row there. Let him know who you are. Fran's having trouble sleeping. At night. No. <laughs> Len, not anymore. Okay. <laughs> but um, the funny thing about peaceful praise is that it's so Lawrence Welke, you know? And um, <laughs> the reason I say that is because you think, well, you know, people more from that day would enjoy it. But this wild rocker, drug addict, former, with hair out to here, young guy comes up to me at the table and says, you know that peaceful praise? I got delivered from drugs listening to that. <laughs> praise God. Don't, don't, don't ever try to put anything that's ministry from the Lord in a certain age group or a certain box because the Lord's a lot bigger than that. So who, who needs healing praise? That has, Oh, you want that? Okay, keep your hand up. There, right back there. Okay, that's not my phone doing that, is it? No, mine's turned off. That's okay, we don't care. Now, thank you, Josh. Sydney, come up. This is my precious granddaughter, Sydney Mercedes Mink, who is 17. And She's holding in her hand something real special. Just stay here a minute, Sydney. Um, <laughs> we have such givers in this church. We have, we have a, a deal back at the table where you can have one of everything on the table, including the little duck that have been prayed over for children to be healed and blessed when you give them to, him, to them, uh, for $120, which is the price of everything on the table, even on sale, is much bigger than that. But for 120 you get one of everything on the table. Now, since we have such givers in this church, a certain giver, and I'm sorry, I have to tell who it is, Scott Martin, he's back there getting one of everything on the table. It's, hold it up, Sydney. Because he wants me to give it to somebody. So what double, triple blessings he's going to get? And I know who I'm going to give it to. I'm going to give it. <laughs> I'm 
I'm gonna give it to Alelia, right there in the sweater, right there. Thank you, Sydney. The Lord said you. So just thank him. Hallelujah. Okay, let's get back to Mark eleven twenty three. 23. Here is Jesus telling us one way to pray. We call it the prayer of faith. There are many ways to pray that, that are in his word. We only want to pray according to the blueprints in his word. Those are the only prayers that get results. So Jesus said, for verily I say unto you that whosoever, how many whosoever's are here? Yeah. Shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So I always sum this scripture up by saying, whosoever can have whatsoever. If we could get that across to the world, every church would be packed up like cordwood. You couldn't keep them out. That God says, whosoever can have whatsoever. That they believe and speak. Therefore, I say unto you, what thing soever? Is it just churchy things? Is it just God things? No. What things soever ye desire? How about that one? When you pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. Well, what's the, what's the blueprint here? If anybody can have anything, that they believe and speak. And they can also have their desires. What, what steps do they take to make that happen? You just follow the simple passage. You just ask the Lord for what you desire. You refuse to doubt in your heart. You say, thank you, Lord. I have it now. I like to say I take it because it talks about receiving. Believe that you receive them. Well, receive is kind of an old-fashioned word that's nebulous, but I'll never forget when I looked it up in the Greek, and then I read about an old missionary woman that was on the mission field totally by herself in Mexico, and she talked about the Lord taught her this, and every need was all, always met, and she was always protected. Even when gangs tried to attack her, she was totally protected. Because she said that the word receive is much more aggressive than it sounds, and that it doesn't just mean passively receive. It means to take with force and aggressiveness. You take it. And why do you take it aggressively? Why does the Lord want you to do that? Because we're in a negative world that tries everything to talk us out of it and to tell us it won't work. The Bible's not really true. And even if it is, it's not true for you because you old ugly thing, everybody knows you did that last week. So it's not going to work for you. And the constant barrage, barrage of negative thoughts and nev negative words spoken through even friends and church people who know better. But we've all done it, so we can't get mad at anybody. So you just repent and do better. But here it is laid out, and I'll never forget, um, about six years ago or so, Brother Copeland told us that he had a vision of Jesus. And Jesus was standing 
in front of him with a silver platter, a beautiful silver platter. And on that platter were these gorgeous cookies piled up. And Jesus said, these are the promises of God. And he said that Jesus had a rather stern look on his face. I think because we're not taking enough. And he even had a stern look on his face with Kenneth Copeland, who preaches this all the time. And Jesus said, take a cookie. <laughs> take a promise. Find your scripture on what you need. Take it. And then he went straight down steps to Kenneth that match perfectly with Mark 11. He said, take a cookie. Take it, believe it, say it or speak it. Thanks, give thanks for it and forgive. Amen. And there was meeting after meeting after meeting that as much as Kenneth had already preached this for years, he told that vision. And every time it helped us. Every time it made us determined to take those promises. Take it, believe it, say it, thank the Lord for it, and then that 25th verse. When ye stand praying, forgive if you have aught, anything against anybody, that your heavenly Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. So unforgiveness, grudges, being mad at people, even though they deserve it, the Lord doesn't care whether they deserve it or not. That's between them and him. Yes. He's talking about you. Yes. So unforgiveness, being mad at somebody, even if they're horrible, only blocks your channel. So he's warning us. He's saying, get rid of the unforgiveness so you have a clear channel for me to answer your prayers. Amen. It's awesome. Now, I always like the symbol of the bulldog. We're to have bulldog faith. Why a bulldog? Because bulldogs have a special latch that other dogs don't have in their jaw. And when they grab a bone, that latch clicks and they hold on. And if there's a bulldog down here and he's got a bone, if I grab that bone and go like this, I got a bulldog hanging off of it because he's not letting go. That's the way you got to be. When Satan, demons, people, thoughts, things in media, things you read, things that come at you, try to fill your mind with negative thoughts. Because once you take it and begin to thank him, that's when the battle begins. That's when you're hammered with unbelief all around you. But you hold on like that bulldog and keep speaking it and speaking it. I think it's so interesting in this Mark 11, what preceded Jesus teaching this way to pray, the prayer of faith. I love it. They had been traveling, Jesus and the disciples, and in Mark 11, 13, it says, and seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, Jesus, if he might find anything thereon. They were hungry. But when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves for the time of figs was not yet. In other words, the tree didn't produce the figs it was supposed to. And Jesus answered and said to the tree, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. I think that's hilarious. And his disciples heard it. So Jesus didn't like it. He doesn't like it when things don't produce. Did you know that you were born to produce? Yes. You were born to produce, yes. to do things. 
for the kingdom and in this world. And you're called and made and created in the image of God to produce. He's a creator and a producer. And if you hide behind closed doors in depression and don't work and don't do anything and let sickness take you over, which is not from God, you will become more and more and more depressed because you're created to produce. And, when, and you're not producing anything, so you feel worthless. You're not worthless to the Lord, but you feel that way. So he's provided all of this victory for us so we can produce. And we don't have to be hindered by lack, by sickness, by injuries, by anything. And that's why we need to know who we are in the Lord and have a good self-image, not because of what we've done or not done, but because of what Jesus has done. Amen. He's done it all, and we take that same self-image that he gave us, righteousness. Amen. Glory to God. So then, so he curses this tree. So there's another way to pray. You can curse things. That scared some of you. If you go to the corner of 129th and 111th, or I call it Olive and 111th, you'll see a half-built building. And you know what that is? That's a casino they tried to build within three blocks of my house that I cursed. You, you have the power. You've been given dominion over the things on this earth and over the devil. Hallelujah, I laugh every time I go by. <laughs> I went to meetings for a while, tried to do it in the natural, and they were so boring and so stupid, so finally I said, I'm not going to any of these more meetings, I'm just gonna curse it. Yeah. And so did Mary Ann, and so did Lynn, and all, so did all of us that live in that area, and it was cursed and it, it can't produce. It's an empty building. Now, so, and in the morning as they passed by, verse 20, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance unto Jesus, said, Master, look at the fig tree which thou cursed. It's withered away. Yeah. That launched Jesus into this whole passage we just looked at, of a formula, a principle, a blueprint of how to pray to get results. Amen. Isn't it wonderful? Yes, amen. And anybody can follow it and do it. Glory to God. Now, it also goes with Mark 9, 23. We're not going to turn there, but I'll just read it. Jesus said, if thou canst believe... All things are possible to him that believes. All. He wasn't afraid to say all. What's in all? All. Everything. And so when I read scriptures like that, this is a good thing to do. I speak out loud and say what Mary said when they told her she was going to have the Messiah even though she didn't understand it. You don't have to feel anything. You may feel something so impossible, but then you see this scripture, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. And you don't feel like you believe, but you speak out anyway and you say, be it unto me according to thy word. Take that cookie. Be it unto me, and say something. Say, be it unto me according to thy word. Now remember, if you, let's go back to our original scripture in 1 John for a moment. Stopping at Titus 1-2, which says God will, he cannot lie. It does not say he will not lie. That would be less powerful. It says he cannot lie. If he lied, 
the universe would fly apart. He wouldn't be God. God cannot lie, Titus says. Titus 1, 2. So he can't lie. He gave us the blueprint in Mark 11. Go back to 1 John 5. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, in other words, if we pray according to how he tells us to pray, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Amen. Glory to God. But because the fight begins when you say, I take it, and you latch on like a bulldog, there's a couple of other things that will really help you, and I believe, speed up your result in manifestation. You know, Gloria Copeland used to say, and, and I loved it, when she said, when I take my stand on a scripture, I'm prepared to stand for all eternity. And that needs to be our attitude, yeah. our bulldog attitude. But we don't want to wait for all eternity. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to take that attitude about not being moved off of it, but we're going to expect it to come quickly. Yeah. Yeah. What can we do to speed up the manifestation? We've talked about refusing to come off our faith, and I have to give this example. This is absolute verified truth. This is nothing for God anyway. But a pastor friend of ours, Pastor Larry Martin, was in prison for a number of years. He was a drug addict. He committed some crimes. He sold drugs. He went to prison. He got saved. He was in prison for a number of years. He was supposed to be in for life, but he got out miraculously through a series of miracles. But while he was in prison for a number of years, he just about was the pastor of that prison. He, he ministered constantly to the other prisoners. And so in prison, this is one of the horrible things about it, uh, they could order one pair of shoes a year. And if they weren't just right, tough luck. That's what you had to walk around in for a whole year till it was time to order another pair. And so knowing this, Larry had been, and knowing the scripture, he'd been declaring, those shoes are going to fit me perfectly. I mean, they're going to feel good on my feet. They're going to fit me perfectly. He'd been declaring that, according to Mark 11, for months. He ordered them. He kept saying it. And one day they came. And he opened them up, and they were tennis shoes. He wanted tennis shoes. And he put, put them on, <laughs> not easily, because they were at least one size, maybe two, too small. And he just was in shock. And he just left them sitting there on the floor, and he went to get a cup of coffee, and he heard the Lord speak to him. Now this to me, is one of the most valuable questions that I've ever heard in my walk with the Lord. And I never want you to forget it. The Lord said to him, why did you come off your faith? In other words, because in the natural realm, those were too small, what did that have to do with a supernatural God that he had faith in? And so Larry got it immediately. He shook himself. He said, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And when you see something that you think is totally contradicted the answer you were waiting for, it's not the end. That's just another step. That's where we've lost so many things. We came off our faith because 
somebody in the natural or some demon put something in front of us that looked like it blocked what we were believing for. And I'm so tired of that. I have a saying, and uh, don't take offense by it, but I don't believe a word anybody says. I don't. If it contradicts something that I'm believing for, that I believe God has told me I can have, I don't care how many people tell me come different. On, come on, come on. I don't care. This is why if you're fired from your job, you don't be moved. You just thank the Lord for a better job and you continue right on. If you've asked for a promotion, a certain one, and they put somebody else in, you don't come off your faith. That person could die tomorrow or be moved out of town <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> but that's not the end. And so Larry saw that when the Lord said, why did you come off your faith? And he said, I'm sorry, Lord, he got right back on it. And that's a great thing. We can repent and get right back on it. And so he went back to his room. His cellmate was there with him, and they have pictures. They, they, this is proof. And um, they looked at the shoes, and they took another shoe, and they praised the Lord that it, the shoes fit. And they took his shoe that he had, the old one, and he put it right next to the new one that was too small. And they sat there, and they watched it, and the new shoes grew out an inch. That's the kind of supernatural things that happen if you won't come off your faith. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. Mm -mm -mm. And he goes, he's out and he goes back and ministers in the prison and has a mighty work there as well as a church. So continue to say it's done because it must be answered. God cannot lie. It's more solid that you are getting your answer than a legal contract. In New York, in D.C., don't say D.C., okay. <laughs> By the way, since I said that, <laughs> about six years ago, the Lord gave us a word uh, and it was during the time when everybody was talking recession, 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 which it was the devil's idea to get everybody talking it so that it would happen. And the Lord gave us a word on the way, and I wrote it down to a minister somewhere. And it's the way it started, and I love it. Since when does the church of Jesus Christ take its cues from the media? And then he said, and the liberal media at that. <laughs> he said, Satan himself whispers in the ears of these commentators yes. and, and that, that reach millions, whispers lies in their ears, and they believe it, and they say it, and they broadcast it, and they bring fear on people that don't know better. And through fear, Satan is able to operate and steal people's money and health and their peace. So we don't put up with that. And now, look how it's even more appropriate today because his word always stands. Uh, we're not going to turn there for time, but also in John eleven forty one, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. And as he was doing that, as he prayed, about that, he said, Father, I know you heard me. Remember, if we pray according to his will, he hears us. Amen. He said the same thing. He said, Father, I know you heard me. So that meant he was praying according to the will of God. So that means it's the will of God to raise people from the dead, too, besides cursed trees and casinos, it raise people from the dead. Amen. It's supernatural. There are no limits with God. If he could only work and do what man can do, we might as well go down to the Kiwanis Club instead of church. <laughs> it's 
<laughs> but once you come into the kingdom of God, everything is run by prayer in the kingdom. Amen. Everything is run by prayer. So get with it. This is why the Lord's leading Pastor Stewart to give us a series on prayer. Amen. Now, there are two things, actually three, that the Lord pointed out to me will absolutely change how quickly you get your manifestation. You want to hear them? The first one's praise. We've got to praise him that it's done. The first time I ever learned about healing was from a little brochure somebody gave me when I was 22, I think. And it said, Mark 11, 23, 24. And I could read, so I got it. I didn't know that was in the Bible, but I read it, and I said, great. I had strep throat at the time, and my throat was hurting and so swollen I could hardly swallow. And I was just alone in my apartment, and, and I read it, and I, I had just been saved. I said, I get it. Thank you, Lord. So I said, I ask you, Lord, to heal the strep throat. I believe that you've healed it, I take it, I say it's done, and I praise you for it. And so for the next two days, every time I went to swallow and it hurt, that would remind me to praise him. So I would just praise him that it was healed. By his stripes, it was already healed. I'd thank him and thank him. The, the third day I woke up and it was totally gone. Right. Totally gone. I think praise speeded it up. Yep. And I was thrilled. Because as you praise, you can speak his word. Thank you, Lord, that by Jesus' stripes, my throat was healed, my throat is healed, 1 Peter 2.24. So you can combine the praise with speaking God's actual word, and that will bring quicker results. The other thing, turn to Romans 8.27, is praying in the spirit. Yes. Praying in the spirit. I don't know where it got the weird name tongues, which makes it sound so weird. Uh, that is so strange. But it's the language of men and angels. It's a supernatural language the Lord gives us when we're filled with the Spirit, and it is the languages of men and angels. And so praying in that heavenly language brings quicker results because Romans 8.27 says, For he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So if you're praying according to the will of God, which you are, then you're adding, after you take it and thank the Lord for it, you add praying in the Spirit to it, which you can do while you're driving, doing anything then the Holy Spirit has opportunity to rearrange things in the natural to bring your manifestation to you. And he then has the legal right to quicken people that may be involved that will have something to do with it. And so when you pray in the Spirit, after you've taken it in the prayer of faith, then you are allowing the mighty Holy Spirit himself to move things around, to bring it to you. And I believe if we would do that, we would see things hopping. We would see them popping. The intensity that we give him praise and pray in the spirit has a lot to do with it. 
I saw in Deuteronomy 32, Marianne and I were talking about this the other day, Deuteronomy 32, 3 and 4, you can just jot that down and look at it later. But it says that we should ascribe greatness to our God. Well, that means praise. And that means, what does ascribe mean? It means tell, it means write. So we should be ascribing greatness to him. What does that mean? That means if the doctor tells you you're going to die or that you're never going to get well from something that's tried to come on you, you ascribe greatness to a God that's bigger than that. Or you can just dwell on the words of the doctor and sink down beneath your privilege. It's up to you. But let's ascribe greatness to him in every situation that tries to challenge us, whether it's a bill, whether it's a doctor's report, whether we're fired from a job. And the third way to speed up the manifestation is to be aware of our angels and send them and allow them to work to bring that prayer answer to pass. Because the scripture says that they are to hearken to the voice of God. But is he yelling from heaven? No. The answer is no, if you weren't sure. He speaks through people. That means you. So you can't hold a microphone up to your Bible and hear the voice of God. You have to speak what God said to give his word voice. And angels hearken to that voice coming through you, and they get busy and bring it to pass. Isn't that awesome? When you're born again, you have an angel assigned to you to be with you Amen. all the days of your life. But there are also many other angels that work for you as well. And I like to take angels from people that won't use their angels and put them to work for me as well. Because they don't like to sit around. But Hebrews 1.14, let me prove it to you. Hebrews 1.14 says about angels, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Now, some people read that and they think it says to minister to them that are the heirs of salvation. And angels can minister to us, but it's bigger than that. They're sent to minister for us who are the heirs of salvation, the Christians. So we can send them out. And we never forget Brother Hagin saying that the Lord told him when he needed money to pick, a, pick an amount and say, let's say $5,000. He told him to say two things. Satan, take your hands off my $5,000. Number two, ministering spirits go and bring it in. Here's the thing. If you don't keep talking God's word, if you start saying, oh, I don't know if it's ever really coming, they stop. So why would we do that anymore? We're not going to. We're not going to. But if we do get down and say that, we can repent quickly Amen. and get right back up. The angels get to working. Bring me those finances. And we don't figure out how any of this is going to come to pass. We just leave that to the Lord. We leave it to him. It takes a big pressure off of us anyway. We just say it's done and keep speaking the word. Psalm 103. Psalm 103, 19 and 20. 
Here it is. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength. See, they're stronger than we are, so they can work harder for us. That do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Glory to God. So you speak his word, you're giving them voice, and you're giving them words to activate and bring to pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We saw it in Daniel 10. We're not going to turn there. But he prayed, and he waited 21 days, and he didn't have an answer yet. But an angel came and said, you were heard. Remember, if we pray according to his will, he hears us, and we have the petition we ask. You were heard the first day. But demonic forces, the prince of Persia, a demon, fought against the angel from bringing Daniel the answer to his prayer. But God cannot lie. And so the angels had to bring him his answer. So he called for reinforcements. He called for Michael, a real big shot with the angels. And they fought and they brought it. And they said to Daniel, we came for your words. So let the angel say, we came for your words. Don't give it up. Don't let go of your faith. Because we came for your words. Because our God cannot lie. And your prayer has to be answered. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Would you stand, please? Father, we thank you. We thank you for giving us the right to pray and telling us how to pray and telling us that you always answer it. We praise you for it. We thank you for it. I want you to just close your eyes for a moment and just lift one hand to the Lord. And whether you need healing, whether you need a financial miracle, whether you need an emotional miracle, whether you need something in your family turned around, a new job, whatever it is, just quietly lift it to the Lord right now. And just shut yourself in with the Lord and just, just whisper it to the Lord and say, Lord, I ask you to do this. Just right now, I ask you to do this. I believe that I receive it. Say that. I take it like that bulldog. Like that bulldog. I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. I, thank I thank you for it before I see it. I praise you. I keep saying it's done. And I forgive everybody. In Jesus' name. And I send my angels to help bring it to pass quickly. In Jesus' name. Well, now give him praise. Amen. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father. Glory, glory to the Father. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. I'll let you be seated. I heard the Lord say, Oh, oh, oh. oh my. For years, for many years, demonic spirits have been gathering in Washington, D.C., invited and brought there by men and women who were up to no good. And many have prayed and have sought me about the condition of this country. Where are we going? What is going to happen? What is taking place? 
Why doesn't this change? Why doesn't that change? Understand that even as it was with Daniel when he prayed, a similar thing has been going on. So you're called upon by the Father even now. Call for the angels. Call for the angels. A host of angels to invade Washington, D.C. To break the power of the demonic spirits over that city. To bring about the fulfillment of that which you have requested of me. And even now you can send the angels forth. And they will go and minister for you so that your land is indeed healed. Well, glory. Hallelujah. So, Father, we send forth the angels now. We call them forth now. We send them now. Go invade that city. Invade that city. Take charge now. Bring down the force of the power of the enemy in Jesus' name so that our land is healed. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Well, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Excellent message. Excellent. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Glory. Now, I just got one question. Were those chocolate chip cookies? I don't think they should be, but I kind of saw them as powdered sugar all over. As powdered sugar? Well, is that your favorite? Powdered sugar? Just whatever kind of cookies you like. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we're not in a big hurry because we're not going to have any trouble getting into the restaurant. (laughs) And the food's all free. And we hope you'll all stay.